What's going on guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, today's video is a Q&A based on answering your questions um, from all the questions you left in the comment section from the last Q&A. And again, if you have a question you'd like to be answered, just comment down below. Uh, I will need some questions for next week's Q&A. Um, so please comment below with whatever you have. It can be fitness related, powerlifting related, um, or completely unrelated to both of them. Um, so first question is, how do you weigh the risk, stroke, the reward of squatting without a spot or safeties? Um, honestly, I, I really feel that um, the risk is higher with squatting with, for example, safety bar, uh, with, with, with safety bars underneath of, in your rack because if you if you fail the lift, um, you're probably most likely going to jack up your bar if you've got a significant amount of weight on there. And then with me kind of squatting, kind of relatively speaking, over five hundred fifty pounds every single squat session, um, I. Probably, if I ever missed a rep, I would most definitely jack up my bar and bend it, which is no use at all. Um, and also, um, a back spot isn't safe. Um, I don't care who you are. Uh, a back, a back spot fr from squatting, when, again, when squatting any significant weight, it is not safe and it is is not really that safe in my opinion. Um, if someone misses a lift, I really don't think that a, a back squat will be able to do very much. The only spot that I would say is the best spot is when you have someone either side of the bar so they could literally get underneath the bar. If you don't have that, I think it's safer just to bail underneath the squat. I mean, it's not really a big deal. Uh, if I miss a rep, which I won't, um, but if I ever did, uh, for whatever reason, then I, I, I just let it fall backwards and I fall forwards. It's, it's really not, I, I don't see any safety hazards with it. Um, in my opinion, the only way it could be safer is if you have a spot either side, and I don't really think very many people have the luxury of that, and it's not really a very big deal. Um, so I hope that answers your questions. Um, next, um, high bar versus low bar squat, opinion is which, which is best for powerlifting. Um, from a purely mechanic standpoint, uh, I would say low bar maybe is a little bit um, more beneficial with the terms of the moment arm between the the bar and your hips is shorter so with the moment arm be, be, be between the bar and the hips being shorter I would say that that would probably um, lead to maybe some more um, efficient leverages however um, I would say that there are always going to be outliers and some people will be much stronger doing high bar uh, is what it is I would say the majority of athletes probably are going to be stronger low bar I would say from a mechanic standpoint with regards to things like the moment arm between your, the, the bar and your back um, and other factors uh, I feel that it probably is going to be a little bit more beneficial but there will absolutely be outliers and the only way to do so is to find out for yourself um, and quite frankly if you pick a stance if you pick a uh, a position, sorry, on your back with a bar and you do it for a long, long period of time, you're going to get really strong, regardless whether it's high bar or low bar. Um, so, I would, so that, that's my answer. Um, best way to increase your bench without gaining body weight for the purpose of staying in a weight class? Bench press more. Um, do more volume. Um, do more volume, increase your frequency. Um, is bench most related to body weight? Probably is, yes. Is it the hardest to increase without increasing body weight? Uh, p potentially, yes. There will be outliers, as always. Um, but I mean, just do the freak to do it more. Um, if you doing more volume and doing more frequency per week, will probably most likely um, increase your bench press um, dramatically. However, I, again, I'm a strong believer that, quite frankly, to really have some big benching, apart from outliers who are probably the one percent, you need to fill out your frame. So if you're six foot and you're in the ninety three kilo class, you're never going to hold enough muscle to significantly increase your bench press. And you can do all the volume and frequency you want, but I don't feel it's going to um, ever get close to whether you just filled out your frame. Um, so that's my answer. And again, as you know, I'm a big believer in unless you're uh, at a world world level or an international level or going for all-time world records or international records, is there really much of a point of holding yourself to a weight class? In my opinion, probably not, but um, I, I know a lot of people like to, like to do so. So I would say um, if that's what you'd like to do, then just increase the frequency and the volume um, and it should still probably go up for sure. Um, the next one is, do you see yourself competing in Strongman a few years from now? Uh, I, I would never say no to that, I think Strongman's really cool. Um, I have a lot of things I'd like to do in powerlifting first um, and Quite frankly, I'm trying not to really think past the next competition, so planning three, four years in advance isn't something I'm that keen to do. Um, is it a possibility? 
most likely, um, but I, I, I could never say yes or no for sure. Um, next question. Based on these answers, it sounds like you never recommend cutting down weight. Would there ever be a reason you would recommend to, to uh, an athlete or a client cutting down weight? Um, I would say that if someone is holding a, a significant, significant amount of body fat, it would potentially be ideal to maybe lose some to 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 lose some weight. Um, if someone is, for example, uh, an eighty-five kilo lifter, uh, or they weigh eighty-five kilos, sorry, and they are already very competitive at an international stage, it would maybe be, but but they maybe would they're not competitive at a ninety-three kilo. Um, international stage at this point it may be a wise idea to kind of maybe hold themselves to the 83 kilo class um, and I would say that it's all down to what you want. At the end of the day um, I'm a pragmatist and I realise that um, there's no point having people do what they don't want to do. If someone wants to lose weight or go down a weight class they're probably going to do it regardless so if someone comes to me um, they're probably going to do it regardless, so I would help them with it. I would explain to them that I feel that, again, it's probably not the wisest of ideas. You're, you mean, you're probably pretty lean as is. Um, but if it's something you really want to do and it's in your heart of hearts, then do it. At the end of the day, consistency um, breeds the... Consistency and adherence breeds the, the best results. Uh, and if someone's going to adhere to powerlifting for longer, um, if going down a weight class, then so be it. I'll help them do it. Um, but, I mean... I think the majority, the main reason why people tend to cut down a weight class um, is not necessarily to be more competitive. I think it is probably to, to, to look a little bit better. And if someone wants to look a little better, a bit better, and they're going to feel more comfortable, then great, let's do it. Um, but again, I think a big problem with a lot of people is they just simply do not understand that their frame's probably a little bit too big for the weight class they want to be going for. Um, weight classes are height classes in disguise, absolutely. And some people just have much bigger frames. Um, and yeah, the people just, I don't really think, really seem to understand that. Um, and I'll explain that to them. If they still want to do it, then great, let's do it. Um, but I think that if you want to do it and it's in your heart of hearts and you feel better doing it, awesome, let's do it. Um, next question. Gibbs versus Hack, who has the win and why? Um, so basically, Brett Gibbs versus um, John Hack, who has the win? Um, what I would say is John Hacken, as far as I'm aware, has never competed at an international stage, ever. Um, now, he is an absolutely phenomenal athlete. He's actually still a junior, so props him for going up to the Open category. Um, but I don't think people really understand the, 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 the difference of competing at an international stage. I did not understand the difference until I competed at the European Championships, where I took the silver medal uh, in March, January, February, March. Yep, it was March. Um, it is a massive difference, it really is. Um, it truly is a two hour weigh in. You are on the platform two hours after you compete. At national competitions, it's not a two hour weigh in because most likely you're probably weighing and probably compete four, four and a half hours later. Um, it gets run much, much quicker. A whole class is probably done at the absolute most three hours. Mine was done under two hours. Um, the level of judging is much, much stricter and experience goes massively so i think to to rule out other athletes um and and the 83 kilo class is um not really doing people justice for example owen hubbard is currently ranked number three um seed going into that competition uh, he is a, a european commonwealth and world junior champion uh, he took silver at the europeans this year in his first open category and i would have absolutely no doubt that he could take silver or take take Brett Ten because on the day he has a lot of experience and is a top level athlete. Do I think John Hack has huge amounts of potential? Absolutely, he's one of the best lifters in the world, guaranteed. I think that lack of experience in the international stage may go against him and if I had to put my life on it, I would say I, I think Brett Gibbs will probably win because I feel A, he's a better lifter and B, he is just so much more experienced. However, um, we'll see in the day and I think that is probably the wrong call to just count other people out. Um, so yeah, that's one thing to think about is that honestly international competitions um, are just completely night and day difference to anything else you've ever done and I feel that, um, I mean if, if, if you've ever, if you've ever you've not even kind of competed past a, a regional level, I mean for example in Scottish powerlifting uh, which is the affiliation of the GVPF which is obviously the, affili the affiliation of the IPF um, 
I mean, if you've not even done a Scottish national competition, so you've just done underneath that, so just local level comps, um, and then you, you, you probably ought to maybe not think about trying to absolutely excel on an international stage your first time. Um, you will de you could definitely do really, really good, absolutely, but I would say that you need to take things like travelling into account, all that stuff. And if you've never done it before, you just don't have that experience. Um, so yeah, that's that's my that's my answer for sure. Um, next question: Rangers or Celtic? Um, Rangers every single day. Um, question: Question: What is your opinion on high rep training of the competition lifts, i.e., 10, 12, 15 plus, etc.? I often hear two sides of the story, and would like to hear your opinion. Thanks. Uh, in, in what context? Um, I mean, I, I would like I, I would like to ask what context you mean. I mean, if you're a week out from a competition, doing sets of 15 aren't going to be helpful. If you're four weeks out from your competition, doing sets of 15 aren't going to be really be helpful. If you are maybe got a 16 week program doing sets of, maybe say for example, if you're undulating it, maybe you do sets of, say you squat three times a week, sets of 15, sets of 10 and sets of 6, um, would be good. I mean, if you do... I, I don't really know what context you mean. I mean, I don't really see how, if programmed incorrectly, sets of higher reps could do any harm. Um, but they it would need to be programmed in properly with your periodization protocol. So I, I, I'm not really sure. I think you're basically asking if high reps are good or not. And of course they're good. Um, of course. But they have to be programmed in correctly. There's no point doing them three weeks out from comp. Um, what else? Next question. What do you estimate your body fat percentage to be? Um, not a clue. I don't know. Don't really care. Um, I don't know. Maybe eighteen to twenty-two percent. Maybe something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, I don't really think you could ever estimate your body fat. I think most people massively underestimate their body fat levels. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really couldn't tell you. So I, I do apologise. Um, how old are you, Mark? I am twenty-one. Um, and the last question is you said high class you said weight classes are high classes in disguise um could you explain this uh, yeah okay basically if you think about it um if you have a six foot tall lifter and a five foot five foot lifter both are at twelve percent body fat and both weigh ninety three kilos. Who's going to hold more muscle? The five foot five guy. So he's going to hold much more muscle and have filled out his frame much more. Therefore, his leverages will be better than yours. So he holds more muscle. His leverages are better are better than yours, and his range of motion is shorter. Therefore, he is going to be the better and stronger athlete. You cannot compete with him because you simply cannot hold as much muscle as him. You cannot fill your frame out as much as him as much as he can at that body weight. You will not improve your leverage as much and your range of motion is much longer if you're a taller athlete. So, that is it explained. <laughs> it seems it's is high class or weight class in disguise. So, hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. Um, again, if you have any questions, please drop them down below. I've uh, got lots of good ones this week and I really enjoyed them. So, if you can give me some more for next week, that would be awesome. Uh, if you made it to this point of the video, thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to all of you guys next time.